The next project, as you can see, we have a Victor Victrola the sixth. That's a VV VI. Or would be if there was a nameplate on this one, but uh, unfortunately the original nameplate was lost. But we know from the uh, patent sticker underneath, which is usually within, in these years, within a few months of production, this is a 1918 machine. First year of this style with a lift away center motor board there, as you see. It's obviously mahogany. Uh, this one was actually sent to me by somebody from Kentucky who found me on eBay and was asking if I could provide a reproducer for this machine because apparently it did not have one. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, I mentioned that it, they should probably do a few more things to the machine if it's been sitting a long time, but I could easily supply a reproducer. That's not a problem. And uh, they ended up sending me the whole machine, so <laughs> well, I'm going to see what I can do. It, it, there's nothing really wrong with it other than the missing reproducer. It's just dirty. It, nothing is broken. Nothing is missing just, other than the reproducer. The crank is, I have it elsewhere, but we have that. Uh, this is the motor. And these the standard little two springs that these use. Being 1918, it is now a single spring barrel instead of two individual spring cans, spring barrels on there. The, they have slightly smaller springs than you'll find on the Victrola the Ninth or something like that. A little bit smaller motor. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. And I see no issues here. The springs are not broken. I don't know how strong they are or, or how weak they might be until I get them out and have a good look at them. But you can see this has been uh, a long time since this was cleaned and serviced, covered with black graphite grease. Um, the governor looks to be in good shape. No, nothing alarming there. Everything looks good. The gears all look good. Minimal wear. Only on this one, which is common. Uh, everything's there. Uh, the other side doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Just dirty. Everything, you know, the speed control. It is missing the knob, which is normal, but I know where the knob is. I know exactly where the knob is, and I'll show you. Let's see. What do you notice there? <laughs> One looks a little larger than the other. Yeah, that's the knob that belongs on the motorboard. Well, the smaller one is the knob that belongs on the cabinet. Now, I have a knob someplace for the cabinet. I have enough, enough of these machines lying around. Some of them are for parts. The larger knobs are actually not that hard to find. It's the smaller knobs for the Victrola 4s that are fourths, Victrola the fourths that are a little bit harder to come by. Uh, these you can actually get reproduction even. They're around. Okay, the bottom is intact on this. I'm going to show you in a second. I don't want that to flop around. There it is, and here's your patent sticker. You barely read it. We call these stickers, but in actuality, they're not. It's a paper, a paper notice, you know, for the patent dates and such. It is shellacked on there. That is shellac. It's not glue, it's not anything fancy. The same shellac they use in a case, and they just shellacked the label right on the bottom. That's all. We have the, uh, the panel is in there. Sometimes these panels disappear. This one is in there. Nothing too interesting inside there, just lots of grease, old needles, the usual stuff. The original uh, factory markings, assembly markings are on there from when this machine was put together in 1918. Some dead bugs in there, stuff like that. Now, tone arm's not in bad shape. Needs a cleaning, typical. You can see here why it's missing its reproducer. This is the exhibition's back gasket. Look at this, all crumbled. This is really common. These gaskets, they crack, and the reproducer will fall right off. Nothing holding it on to this gasket but two screws. Right there, you see the holes for them. And when it falls off, that's it. Your reproducer is separated from the machine. Not good when that happens. But I do have spare reproducer. We will get that working. Uh, we, we will uh, get it playing again probably tomorrow. A little late in the day now for me to start any big projects. Now, another word about these. If you ever have to ship a Victrola the 4th or a Victrola the 6th, those are the two small tabletop models Victor had without lids, it's always a good idea to take this back bracket off. The bracket here. It's four screws. Four flathead screws right there. Come out real easy. This whole piece comes right off with the tone arm. You wrap that separately. You ship it in its own little box. 
so it doesn't uh, get banged around or if this machine is say dropped in transit this could be damaged you could end up snapping this off you could other things can happen unpleasant things can happen plus you don't have to have quite as big a box if you don't have to worry about this extra two and a half inches sticking out here so that's always good this the set the owner did not know to take that off and i forgot to tell him he actually shipped it before i could uh, send him shipping instructions but uh no harm was done this time but in the future it, should anybody watching this have to ship one of these machines you sell one whatever take that off always take that off the amount of dust that formed up over here wow you can tell this machine like all of them was sitting around a long time everything looks good the wood is nice the veneer is very nice it's nice this is solid wood here this is all solid on these machines but your motherboard is veneered your side panels your doors your back panel all of that is veneered down here this is also solid mahogany but this is veneer and you always have to worry that it's going to start to peel if it was ever damp or anything like that in a human environment it could warp it could peel fixable in most cases that is fixable it can be re-glued it's only high glue that's all they use to hold that down it's just high glue compressed you know you have to use clamps and all of that but it's doable but uh, this machine has no such issues it has obviously some um, I'm not really sure yet if this is fumed mahogany I think it is because if you look at the underside that's usually a dead giveaway red mahogany would still look pretty nice under here and you know still pop a little bit but when you see it dark like that this is probably going to be fumed mahogany we'll see how much reddish tint it has when I when I get done with the cleaning and of course it's missing its little rubber feet which we'll take care of we'll, we'll get uh, new rubber feet I have them in stock I always keep them because they're always bad rubber simply does not survive you know 102 years it, it's not going to the rubber feet disappeared off this machine probably when it was maybe 20 years old 25 years old unless they were replaced and they, usually by then they were in a closet somewhere or attic or whatever and uh, the sixes were extremely popular machines you know they were a great seller for Victor from 1911 to 1924 and they continued to sell them for a couple years after that for export mostly to South America uh, just a really nice machine they played well they sounded good didn't have a lid but that's okay you know they still played nicely they uh, didn't take up as much space as a lidded machine does they were good for people who had apartments small houses or just didn't want a machine that intruded into the, the living space quite that much and of course all kinds of special tables sprung up for these machines just like they did for the nine you know they sat on them or they slid into them various styles and designs and they turn up quite often now, they weren't made by victor the tables were produced by other furniture manufacturers just a cottage industry that sprung up to service these machines because there were so many of them and some people decided that their coffee table or whatever wasn't enough for it they wanted a special table with record storage which uh they uh, they did they got one I actually have i have a table for one of these it's not in the best of condition because it came out of an old barn and it was it suffered but uh and it had been painted i use it for record storage though i don't have it here at the moment but that's a preliminary look at this machine the 1918 victrola sixth not the first 1918 i have done uh for a six and not obviously not the six not the first six i've done i've done many of these machines like i said they're very common and popular exceptionally well made like all the victor products and they turn up all the time on ebay uh, basically if i'm going to a flea market i can be pretty well assured I'm going to see at least one of three different machines, or all three. A Victor, Victrola 4, a Victrola 6, or a Victrola 9. I'm going to see one of the three of those, because those were the three most popular tabletop models. The 8 is in there too, and I do occasionally turn up an 8 at a flea market. But they weren't as popular, and they weren't as numerous as, as the 4, the 6, and, and, the tw and the 9. Floor machines rarely show up at flea markets to my experience because they're just heavy and nobody wants to move them too much you know every now and then i run into one but not too often and it's never a 16 it's always going to be a 10 or whatever you know one of the smaller ones but these i have lost count of how many of these i have turned up at flea markets uh, 
I have a friend of mine that does a lot of flea markets down south and he turned up three of these for me last year. So they're around and in my personal collection I have, oh, five, six of them, uh, all years, you know, scattered around in there and I have uh, gold and oak and mahogany and fume mahogany and red mahogany, all of them. And uh, the same goes for the, the nine and the four. Yeah, got quite a few of those. But there you go. There's the preliminary look, better look at the motor there, of the Victrola 6 before I get into it. I promised the machine's owner that when I had time I would go over it and see what it's going to need, what disasters there might be there, didn't find any, all the wood is solid, everything's good, just needs the basic service. And of course, the reproducer's already done for this machine, you heard me playing it on the uh, Victor, Victor 3 actually, is the one that's going to end up on this machine. It's a basic uh, um, exhibition, same as the one that was originally on this machine, with a triangular hole in the needle bar, which is correct for these years. And that's really all it needs, other than some uh, needles and uh, some new grease. Alright, there you go.